Chess Friends, How Are You? Titled Tuesday is one of the greatest tournament on chess.com where many super grandmasters join the tournament to win, if you are a 200 rated player then you can't join, but if you cheat successfully and gain 2900 LO, then you may join the tournament, we have Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen on this game, Hikaru started with a3 try to protect that square from the bishop entry, he said, I hate your bishop on this line, Magnus is saying, oh, I have no issue. I have a another route to get active my bishop, we have e4 c5 bishop goes out to c4 bishop g7 knight c4 knight c6 knight to e2, this knight e2 move plan is to castle in kingside, d3 then push the f pawn, knight will go there to help the pawn to move, another strategy for Hikaru is to play d3 bishop out and move the queen to castle in queenside, and then push your kingside pawns like a strom, so Magnus play e6 d3 knight to e7, and we have h4 by Hikaru, his idea is to push the pawn then takes takes. Go ahead on the h file with another rook by castling on queen side, the h file and the d2 to h7 diagonal will be asset for white, if it doesn't work then play knight to g3 where the h5 square is already targeted, that's why Magnus played h5 to wake up Hikaru from his dream, and he played d6, this pawn structure blocks the light square bishop diagonal, and at the same time it blocks the dark square bishop's entry points, while playing with black the knight often comes to take away your piece. Queen up to d2 queen d7 bishop to a2 a6 castle, by casting in queenside he commits to push the kingside pawns to start attacks with knight after opening the center structure, bishop b7 king b7 and magnus choose to play castle, they don't want any war for the kings, they just want to play normally, trade pieces and make 200 elo tactics, we have f6 but best move was to play rook f8 because this pawn is losing away but you know what, there is an amazing tactic with the rook, to pin the bishop however. However, Hikaru can take the bishop sacrificing the queen away, to get active his most of pieces on the game, d5 and if you are a 200 elo player then you might take the pawn, then knight takes pawn will come to block the bishop line, knight takes knight and this targets to the bishop, but queen takes bishop is not good because of knight f4 and it will lift you up to the sky by punching on your back, so we will see e takes d5 then bishop f6, rook will escape from there, knight takes d5 to protect it. Knight d4 to target the knight, and the bishop so knight e7 check king up to c7 check backs and knight takes, it looks like everything is protected but there is a savage move, rook takes f2 and everything will be fall, queen will arrive on there to pressure you, it will be very bad so back to the position we have bishop f6 rook f8 bishop g5 knight d4 f3, Magnus played b5, his plan is to move the pawn, takes takes and kick out the knight, then push the a pawn to trap the light square bishop. After moving the knight to the a5 square, Hikaru Nakamura calculates all these moves within a second and he takes the knight on e7, because after queen takes e7 knight takes g6, it forks to the queen and rook, queen g7 knight takes rook queen takes rook, rook slides to a6 and white is threatening to take the pawn with 1 2 3 pieces, queen g8 pawn takes queen takes g2 pawn takes e6 queen takes check, Magnus gets the opportunity to involve the queen for the king's tomb and Hikaru gets the passed pawn. But it is the Hikaru who is winning the game, I mean he is one square away from promotion, what he will play. Knight e4, to fork the king and bishop by playing d6, Magnus prevents it with queen h2 rook h1 queen backs rook c1 and here you cannot take the pawn on e7, let me show you the variation, if you take the pawn then rook takes check will come, king here rook to c1 threatening to play rook c8 check so bishop d7 rook takes h5 a6 bishop d5 bishop c6 rook takes c6 white will sacrifice the rook, because after knight takes e6 bishop takes e6, White is material up and he is totally winning. Tell Magnus Carlsen to count his teeth, so back to the position, we have c4 and threatening to take the pawn, d takes c4, here you cannot take the pawn, let me show you why, again the same position will happen which I told you, the king will be exposed and knight bishop can't help the king properly, white pieces are super active and it is the white who is going to destroy black after sacrificed his queen 20 moves ago, so Magnus played before, pawn takes queen takes e7 c5 bishop to a4. Here best move is to play rook c4 to protect his army but Hikaru gets overconfident and played rook g1, knight c2 check, 
this knight targets to the king and pawn and also, blocks the rook's line, so king b1 knight takes pawn knight d6 king here rook c4 to target these pieces, but it is a blunder move, best was to play bishop c4 because after queen e3, this targets to the rook so c6 check by Hikaru, bishop takes c6, rook slides to d1 and we have queen e2, blunder move best was to take the pawn. We have another blunder move by Hikaru blunder best was to play bishop b3, let me show you the variation, after bishop b3 to protect the rook, knight d3 bishop c2, and this position is totally okay for white, eval bar will be Hikaru's side. But in our actual game, Hikaru played rook c1 instead of bishop b3, because now Magnus get a chance to distract white pieces from their combination, king to c7, rook d2 queen takes f3 rook d1, bishop e4 king to a1 and chess friends, if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel then you can like and subscribe to my youtube channel to get more episodes like this, queen f4 bishop b1 knight c5, taking the bishop isn't good because you need enough materials to survive the game from queen and knight. So bishop a2 bishop c6 rook here bishop b5 and we have final super blunder move by Hikaru blunder Mura, best was to play rook d1, because knight e4 is forking on your two rooks, so rook c2 knight takes rook takes c3, Hikaru sacrificed his queen for rook and bishop, he gain advantages but some blunder moves destroy his position and the game, Magnus also played some blunder moves because he is a human also. Humans only see a one idea in the game because his memory, concentration and vision is limited, he have to develop his idea, and intelligence otherwise no matter what amount of best moves you play, one blunder move will completely lose the game.